Welcome to me overanalyzing every single chapter of Atlanta the Lustrous because I got a little bit of extra time on my lunch break today. Uh, spoilers for up to 105 because that's what's out at the time of recording this video. And if you have any additions to the overanalysis, please leave them in the comments. As always, we have started on a new volume this time, so let's look at the cover, which is pretty self-explanatory, but you know. One thing, I, I mentioned this last time for when we went over the volume one cover, but Cinnabar is here. I know that you don't see them in the covers, but they're there, always. Uh, so what I find it interesting here is that for this cover, uh, the, oops. So for this cover, like everyone has like a somewhat happy somewhat ha ex happy expression on their face boss is giving like a more surprised it, everyone except Cinnabar who's like actually concerned with the situation it looks like but yeah we have both the amethysts because I think in this volume Foss teams up with both the ha amethysts yeah at the end uh and then uh we have yellow diamond because I think yeah yellow the di diamond cats Foss's boss after they lose their legs uh and then we have Cinnabar, because Cinnabar is always a presence in the story. Um, so, one thing I did want to note, because I was curious about this, is this is the amethyst that goes with Foss of the Moon. I don't know if there's any relation to them being lower in the frame or not. Um, Dia, I guess this amethyst is closer to a yellow diamond. Um, so, these are the two in the cover who go with Foss to the Moon, uh, while this amethyst stays behind. Uh, so, yeah, now let's get back to the volume. So getting back to the volume, like there's the cover and stuff. Um, uh, yeah, I, I haven't really been going over the like little blurbs on the back. Uh, I, you know, there, there's summaries. I actually haven't really read them. Uh, I read the first one. I actually haven't read this one. I guess we can read this one. Fossil I is determined to find their, find a less lonely job for the talented Cinnabar, but no, but with no easy answer to be found on land, the quest turns seaward. Ventricosis and the sea snail suggest that the creatures who live there may have the clue Foss needs, but the ocean is, danger is a dangerous place for a hap help hapless, hapless gem. Will this sea of possibilities turn into a wavery, a watery grave? Heh <laughs> heh. Um, no, because, you know, characters can't die. No one dies in this series. Uh, anyway. What what is kind of funny is that they relate it to the show Steven Universe, which there are similarities, yes, but very different series, as you know. Um, I actually got my one of my friends into this series because uh, they're a huge friend. There's they're a huge fan of Steven Universe, and I'll, I was like, it's Steven Universe, but an anime and darker. Even though this, besides characters sharing some names, they're very different. Anyway. Uh, here we have like Foss's shoes. Uh like that is true. Foss did lose their shoes when they went underwater, you know, like that. And now here is the care the first character introduction page we actually get. Um this is significant because um I watched a video that I should really cite this, but there's a video that goes over how the character introduction pages foreshadow things. For instance, Foss's legs are hidden in this character introduction page so that could relate to something. Also, Foss is really close to Congo, and Foss is really close to Congo in the kind of character introduction page in chapter one. And I think that's to like really build that Foss, or foreshadow that Foss becomes like Congo later in the series, even though it's very early. But it also just shows that they're very connected to Congo at this point. And as the character introduction pages go on, Foss gets farther and farther away from Congo. And when Congo actually steps down as leader, Congo isn't even in the character introduction pages. So it's very cool to see that happen. Or, or, or how the character introduction page just shifts with the story. I also want to note that most of the characters in closer to Foss in the pairings are the ones that go to the moon. I think the only one characters that really don't are Jade, Euclid, and Red Barrel. But Bennett, uh, I call, I nickname, I'm Bennett Tight, oh, Knight, I don't know how to pronounce it. So I just call them Bennett, even though I know that's not their name. Um, so if I call them Bennett while reading, uh, just let me know. I'm talking about Bennett, though, or something. I just, Bennett's easier for me to say. Anyway, so we can see that Bennett is closer to Foss uh, in their pairing, uh, and Yellow Diamond is closer to Foss, and of course Daya is also closer to Foss. And this is the amethyst that goes to uh, the moon with Foss, and they're also closer. So it shows that like 
these characters are closer, and uh, Cinnabar and Bort are on the same side. And th- I mean, the only one who's not is Goshenite, but this is old Goshenite and not new Goshenite, so I feel like that's fine, because they're technically not. And they're also, I think, probably the farthest proximity-wise from Foss, so it's interesting to see, for sure. Uh, I, there isn't that much I can say about the uh, character introductions themselves, except that uh, currently struggling to help her, just plain weak. It's interesting how that changes, but the character introductions also always say that Foss is the hero of the story, so it's very interesting how people say that, you know, Foss goes on a villain arc, because they kind of do. <clears throat> Sorry, my voice is dying. Uh, but the character introduction plays always enforces that Foss is the hero of the story, and that kind of hurts just knowing what happens. And, uh, you know, people have turned opinions about it. Um, I can't, I, I think that the story is supposed to make Foss feel like both, because Foss technically does save everyone, uh, but, you know, in, like, the worst way possible. <laughs> anyway, and also here we have the great and terrible sensei. Um, I'm wondering, I, I'm half the Japanese ones coming. Actually, they're delivered, but I haven't, but they're delivered at, uh, uh, somewhere else, so I need to pick them up at some point. But uh, I don't have the Japanese one. But I'm wondering if the word used here and why they translate it as great and terrible is uh, sugoi, which, you know, you hear that in anime. For those of you who don't know, sugoi can either mean terrible or awesome. And so it's kind of funny. So I wonder if that's the word used here and the translators wanted to translate both. So that's why it's great and terrible. Um, and that kind of, at this point in the story, we have nothing to suspect uh, sensei of. But um, it's interesting that like the translation decided to put like a little bit of like something might be a little off about this guy you know um who else who else it it describes one of the animates this as carefree and the one that goes to the moon with foss is laid back um maybe i i wonder if that has like that small word change could indicate like why 33 went to the moon and not 84. um I guess I can make some inferences about it, like maybe because 33 is more laid back. I don't know, because carefree and laid back are pretty similar. But um, I guess carefree implies that like they don't really think about like other things or something. I don't know. I, tell me what you think in the comments, because maybe like 84 just wanted to stay how it was and 33 actually wanted some change. Um, yeah, the amethysts I feel like are very neutral in the story, honestly. Um, even though we did see 84, like, break down when all of them left, and I, I thought that was sad, too, even though they didn't say anything, just the fact that they lost, like, you know, probably the closest gem to them. Anyway, back to this. Um, let's see, I don't think I have any others. Um, it talks about how, uh, Yellow Diamond is pretty fast, which we see later. Um, oh yeah, Bennett, it says, easily dragged into things. Um, considering that Bennett goes with the moon gems, which I actually wasn't expecting Bennett to come to. Uh, and so that's, that kind of, it foreshadows that Bennett kind of just follows along with Foss in going to the moon. And I feel like, I feel like Bennett's like the least crazy one in the story, so it's kind of weird that they were the ones who, who also went to the moon. Uh, so interesting. Anyway, then we have the thing the table of contents, and I love that the, like, bubbles go through it. It's so cool. Anyway, finally to chapter seven, Ventricosis. So here we have the Lunarians, like, praying, bowing down to uh, Congo. I'm gonna call him Congo, yeah. And we get the petals. Again, I don't know enough about Buddhism to make uh, comparisons for that, so if you know a lot about it or have watched a bunch of video essays on it, please leave your observations in the comments. But we see here that the Lunarians are, like, bowing down to him, and what I thought about here is that, um, it's kind of mirrored when Foss does it, but we see this Lunarian going up and trying to grab, uh, Congo, and they actually do it, and this kind of reminded me when Foss does that, except Foss is on the other side, so it's on the other way, and, and like, pleads, you know, when they're that very dramatic scene. Uh, and Congo actually reaches their hands up, you know, s- starts praying, and then they're like, oh, no, don't, please, don't do that, yeah. Uh, it's also, but now all the Lunarians are gone, so it's interesting. Um, that does not build well. So I wonder what Congo's dream, like, state is. Maybe it is kind of like the visions that Foss gets at the end of, again, I don't know chapters that well, I've just read through the whole thing. 
but you know when Foss takes Congo's eye and uh and Foss uh and you know and and Foss gets Congo's eye and starts seeing visions of the past I wonder if that's kind of like what his dreams are but I have no idea another thing that just came to my mind right now is that whenever Foss speaks to Congo Congo's facing this way like we see in this one Congo's facing that way I just realized that the eye that Foss takes is this eye, right? So Congo's facing this way. Every time Congo is talking to Foss, the eye that Foss takes is on the side that is seen. Uh, and in that case, with Foss looking back on him, the eye that Foss get the eye that's replaced, is that right? No, the one that the Foss would be looking back at him from would be the one that would be replaced by the pearl. So interesting. I don't know how that affects it. You can link into the comments. Here we have Jade. Um, I don't know if there's much. He was overslept, you know. Uh, why didn't you wake me up? Um, we see that, like, you know, head pats. Um, no, don't with it so quickly. I find it interesting that Jade kind of mentions Foss last year. That's what I thought of uh, in the thing. You know, Bort says that they dealt with them and that it wasn't that much effort. We see that Congo doesn't want them to overwork themselves, which is kind of interesting because, like, he... I guess he only really wants them to exist. So them having a role is really their doing to occupy their time. But Congo wants them to enjoy like their life, you know, and that's why he kind of says like, don't overwork yourself, I assume. Um, but I think like Bort's response here is just supposed to say that they enjoy doing what they do, uh, you know, for that praise from him and for that, uh, for having a influential role in the society. Assume everyone is harmed. Yes. And so then, you know, uh, Jade mentions, like, all this other stuff, like Red Barrel wanting to look at the fabrics, uh, Euclid's dropping their records in the water. And it's just interesting that Jade mentions Foss last, assumably that's why. I guess that really shows that Foss is less important to them. Like, more less important than talking about Euclid's dropping papers in the water. Uh, Jade is like, oh, right, and then there's Foss. Um, nothing against Jade, or Jade just didn't wanted to say that for last because it's kind of the most notable thing that happened like while well, sensei was asleep but um it's interesting that jay leaves boss for last but it also could just be a plot device or in terms of the layout so that they can list all these things and then you know transition to the scene so i don't know let me know in the comments you are in the presence of a great ruler of the i amorable i don't know Admir i don't know how to pronounce that <laughs> every single video i think i've watched that mentions them, like, always calls them something else. I've been calling them, like, the snail people. Uh, not their official name, you know. Uh, but I can say Ventricosis' name just fine, but, you know. Uh, so, yeah. I love Foss and Ventricosis' dynamic here. Um, it's it's great. Uh, Dawn, I was hoping you'd drink again. You know, I was born and raised in the waters of the coast. The is taken. So, this is true... But um, it's interesting because when, like, Entricosis says livestock, that, like, makes me think that they're, like, food or, like, gives something valuable to them. But I feel like the snails, I'm just going to call them snail people. I feel like the snail people on the moon, like, are getting fattened up, but it seems like they're just kind of, like, allowed to roam free. It didn't seem like the Lunarians were, like, actively harming them or anything. And Ventricosis says that they want freedom for their people. So I wonder what that means. Maybe they just want their own space or something. Uh, let me know in the comments, because that's something I thought a little bit about, but not a lot. But when I hear livestock, I assume for like food or like resources or something, but it seems like they're kind of just keeping the snail people there as like pets. And of course, the we hear this later, but the original uh, king of them went to the moon people to to get food because they were eating all their food on the uh because there was no food or anything left in the oceans so that's why and so it's interesting I, like we don't get a lot of information about that so their dynamic is a little interesting <laughs> to say the least but um of course for this i'm assuming ventricosis needs to put up the act because their ventricosis is in some way you know made a deal with the lunarians to try and get boss you know, away. So this also could just be Ventricosis playing up the dramatics of it to get Foss. So I'm not sure if Ventricosis is being actually genuine here. 
And of course, Foss actually doesn't believe them, which I find interesting because Foss is like, well, if it's true, uh, I might sort of feel bad for you, but I don't know. It's kind of interesting how Foss like doesn't immediately trust Ventricosis, um, but Foss is so willing to trust other characters at some point. Like, I guess the main one I'm thinking of is Acnea, because like Foss gets suspicious of Sensei later, and a lot of people are like. I, I've know I've heard of a lot of people in my comments and stuff saying like why did Foss like so easily trust Acnea when Foss went to the moon? But it makes sense with them being so distrusting of Sensei and then all of a sudden Acnea is like on their side, considering that every other gem hasn't really been. So I feel like that makes more sense. But it's interesting how it shows that Foss isn't as innocent to just believe anything and everything. Because Foss is like, oh no, I'm not taking your dramatics, like, you know at least in this scene. So, like, it's kind of interesting because you'd think that they get more mature as, like, time goes on, but Foss actually gets more easily manipulated as time goes on. It's interesting to see, just with the fact that Foss doesn't easily uh, believe everything that Ventricosis says, but when Foss gets to Acnea, to be fair, a lot of what Acnea said was, like, like, half true half not you know because you know he got rid of some of the information that would have really affected Foss's decision like the fact that the gems would also go away if Mongo prayed and Acnea never told Foss that um anyway uh Foss you're talking to yourself <laughs> uh, this is also a time where people start calling Foss a little bit mentally sick or you know just because Foss is talking to the snail and the reason why Foss can talk to the snail I think is because like, they were disintegrated by Ventricosis, so I bet that was a thing. Um, Ventricosis also says here somewhere, I'm, uh, maybe not here yet. Okay, how are you feeling? Don't change. So this is Yellow and Zircon, uh, and then we have Sin, I assume that's probably Peridot, and then Nefty, and, uh, why did I just forget Bennett's name? There, that's Bennett. It's so, again, a lot of people say that the critique is that they can't understand sometimes which characters are which. We know that's Bennett just because it's Nef Nefty next to them. But um, I find it interesting that all of them are kind of taking pity on Foss and Bennett is the only one who's actually trying to like, like saying like, hey, let's all play cards like later tonight. I actually kind of like that with Bennett. Like, um, it's weird because Bennett sometimes says really mean things like specifically about Cinnabar and Nefty. But when it comes to Foss, maybe it's just because Foss is the main character. I guess they don't say that stuff in front of their faces. But, you know, Bennett is like, let's play cards tonight, like trying to get Foss's mind off it. So I thought that was actually kind of nice. Um, but, oh, 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 yeah. So another thing with the shots again is that, uh, again, always, like as we saw before, is that uh, except with Ventricosis, when talking to Ventricosis, Foss is above in the frame. Of course, Ventricosis is so small at this point. But it shows that Foss sees them as above Ventricosis. When they are talking to other gems, they're always lower. Always. And I think that's, you know, it's to show that, like, Foss is always just crawling on the ground for some reason. <laughs> but it's also to just show that uh, the that Foss idolizes the gems and the gem and the gems look down on Foss, or that's at least how Foss views it, since we're since the story is from Foss's perspective. But even here, see, we have Ventricosis here, we have Foss in the middle, and we have all the gems. Uh, placed above them um well well, well you know uh, i'm the only one everybody thinks i'm sick in the head because i can understand you how are you gonna make it up to me um it is kind of nice to see these dynamics um ventricos is of course funny just with how different they are compared to the gems because you know yeah <laughs> anyway um yeah, and I love how Foss is just, like, not taking any of their slack. But I guess that's also because Ventricosis got on the wrong foot with Foss, just with, you know, eating them. That would kind of not help with making friends. So it does make sense why Foss is a little bit less distrusting of Ventricosis than with Acnea. It's also interesting to think about how Ventricosis is kind of like the leader of the other... Um, they're the leader of the other race besides the gems. And Acne is, you know, the leader of the Lumerians, kind of. And, and Congo is, like, the leader of uh, the gems. And so it's kind of interesting because, you know, at the end of this chat... Spoilers! No, I already told you guys spoiler warning. But at the end of this um, whole event, you know, Foss gets a gift from Ventricosis, which are the legs. Um, and then when Foss goes to the moon, uh, 
Foss gets the eye from Acmea. And then Foss gets the other eye from Congo at the end of the series. And so it's kind of like Foss getting the different things from the three races uh, that also sets them apart on this journey. And we don't know that because we don't think about it. But it, out it, like here, you know, they're just losing limbs and stuff. But later it becomes more clear. Uh, oh, and oh, this time, like, uh, then Foss realizes that Ventricos has met Cinnabar. And this is when Foss realizes that Cinnabar kind of saved them again by giving Ventricosis that information. Uh, Cinnabar saving again? That's not good. That's bad. And see, this, like, it's kind of sad that, like, Foss sees it that Cinnabar saving them is a bad thing. Is because they don't want to be indebted to Cinnabar. They really want, don't want to be a burden to Cinnabar. They want to improve Cinnabar's life instead of making it worse. And that's what Foss wants to do. And so hearing that Cinnabar saved them again is why they say that, why, why it's bad. And that's why when they meet him later, they're like, for sure, I'll save you next time. Um, because Foss really wants to be useful to Cinnabar instead of a burden. Um, yeah, yeah, I understand. You don't want to look bad in front of you. No, just Ventricosis being Ventricosis. Ventricosis and Daya, <laughs> really the team of shipping random characters. Um, what's that mean? No, it's nothing like that. Um, Cinnabar told me, okay, so for this one, Cinnabar told me a secret. I think I'm the only other gem who knows it. And I don't know why, but I don't want to think that the loner, that that loner would have told anyone, told just anyone. See, I, I've never had anyone depend on me before. So next time I absolutely have to be the one who does the saving. All right. This is just a really sad, like what, what Foss is saying. Because of course it's not explicitly said. But um, I was trying to figure out what Foss was saying the secret is. And I believe the secret is Cinnabar's feelings of uselessness and kind of like the depression that Cinnabar has. And Foss saying that like Cinnabar decided to share that with them shows that Foss knows that like that the Cinnabar chose, kind of chose Foss to give this information to. And now Foss feels like they have to help Cinnabar because Cinnabar was so vulnerable with them. Uh, and that's why they say that they want to aid Cinnabar and they want to save them and not the other way around. Uh, it's time to get serious. And then you have Rutile trying to, you know, help help Foss here because Rutile thinks Foss is mentally sick, which of course not Rutile. Foss would never be that way. Um, it's kind of interesting that Rutile becomes a psychiatrist later on the moon. Um, because instead of fixing people physically later on, then what Rutile does instead is try to help fix people mentally. So it's kind of interesting how that works out. Uh, this is just a funny scene. <laughs> this was also hilarious in the anime, but you know, and then that's going to be my fault. I'm sorry, Sinibar, it's all over. It's just so funny, the dramatics of it. Uh, remember when the series was funny? Uh, <laughs> anyway, um... No, I can't nibble on this one. Of course, this is because he's not a gem, he's a machine, and he's supposedly made out of uh, the hardest substance, you know. Uh, this is a snail. I see, ruler of the shellfish. Uh, although our circumstances are different, seashells too are among the lustruses. So this is saying that, like, you know, Congo is saying that they're a part of the, like, human uh, distribution, but um, he's also, like, relating it to the gems. Um, you are welcome here. What do you intend to do? I love how Foss corrects uh, what Ventricosis says, because Foss is like, why would you say that? It also could be just because they don't, the gems don't talk this way. So maybe Foss hearing that is just how Foss interprets what Ventricosis says. But I do think it's because of their snark too. You know, they're like, no, you're weird. Why would you say that to <laughs> Sensei sort of thing? Um, and it's, it's funny how, uh, Congo reacts compared to Ventricosis. Uh, honestly, like Ichikawa can write comedy, but the, but um, she's she's good at writing depressing situations as well. Uh, by the way, the only one who can understand the sovereign's words, yeah, and then making it part of Sunday Sensei about Cinnabar. This is where Koss actually asks about Cinnabar. Um, these words, forgive me. I think this is the first time in the series we actually hear someone say that, and. Um, we, Ventricosis says this later too, uh, you know, as soon as the betrayal happens, Ventricosis is like, forgive me. 
and I want to make a video about all the times that's said just because it's interesting how like the characters apologize to Foss for the things that they haven't done and then Foss takes the initiative to actually do that and like it's interesting that like he says forgive me here later on like Foss will use this against him and that's kind of like what it is is that he's like I'm sorry that I'm not like able to do this and Foss forgives Ventricosis but you can see how much they change because they later on in the story they don't accept forgiveness you know and at the very end of the story them saying goodbye to everyone and praying them off to existence that is sort of them forgiving everyone for what happened in the entire story and so forgiveness is a like wacky concept in the story that i want to explore in another, another video so let me hear your thoughts uh is that a really and this is when we learn that cinnabar shows that job and you know it shows that foss is really feeling guilty for being saved by cinnabar tri twice cinnabar saved me from my own inc incompetence twice isn't there any other and it also shows that foss wants to reciprocate the kindness that cinnabar has shown them through saving them and the only way that foss can think of to repay that kindness is to find them a job even though later like you know cinnabar is like you know if we just pair it up i would i would have been fine with that but you know um foss sees it as getting cinnabar another job is the way to repay them uh the night bar cinnabar's own idea this is such a sad set of panels this was also done in the anime really well but uh i've told cinnabar i've told cinnabar time and time again uh that staying alive is all i expect of the ch of the child the poor thing is too wise and too kind to merely sit and breathe on the march uh, and as time marches on and Foss is a little like this too and this is what he wants for all the gems he just wants them to exist and that co goes completely against his role of praying and um that is why it's so heartbreaking for him when Foss comes to him just asking Congo to just pray for Foss because that is his only desire is that the at this very moment my mic decided to die with no explicable reason for some reason and uh this happened for two other videos i recorded this morning so that means i have to re-record those videos uh and the next part i will be dubbing over myself uh for what i thought i was saying at that very moment sorry about that as i was saying all congo does is ask for the gems to live and Foss comes to him asking to not do that. I assume that's what I'm saying in the scene. Looking back on it, I feel so bad for Congo in that moment. And that is uh, very sad for everything involved. On to the next page. Ah, oh, yes. So right here, I believe I'm talking about the visual uh, direction <laughs> uh, where Congo and Foss are facing each other. Um, and I'm talking about how Congo is also always facing Foss from the left. and. Uh, Foss is always facing Congo from the other way, and I'm talking about how Congo's eye uh, that he gives to Foss later uh, is always facing us, the audience, and um, Foss's eye that gets taken up by the Lemurian is always facing us during these conversations. And so I feel like that was very interesting, and I don't know if I connected it to anything else at this moment, but I know that I at least pointed that out right here, uh, thinking that was very cool. And now I'm probably talking about the text. If I haven't mentioned this already, I believe I'm talking about how Cinnabar um, is chose the Night Patrol, and we learn that here, and that it shows that Cinnabar has stuck with one job while Foss has not, um, and it shows that Cinnabar is more comfortable uh, than Foss in their situation, uh, and because of that comfortability, Cinnabar does not wants to keep the status quo. If that like in that sort of sense, like Cinnabar wants to have things stay the way things the way they are and that's why foss keeps changing different jobs is because foss is the opposite foss keeps constantly trying new things and get and goes on to something else when they're fed up with it whereas cinnabar the reason cinnabar has stuck with the night watch for so long longer than foss has been alive uh is because they are comfortable that way and they don't want to get out of that comfortability uh whereas foss is hasn't been comfortable with anything and that's why they've been going places you know and, and changing what they're doing and that's why cinnabar doesn't want to give hope and foss because they 
they don't want to have hope because they don't want to change because that could get worse. It could get better, but it could get worse. And that's Cinnabar's view on it, and Foss is the opposite. They're willing to change. I also want to point out here that uh, Congo says that to Foss, please wait a little while. Please wait a while longer for a solution. And of course, we all know that Cinnabar has been waiting for a solution for a really long time. And it just shows that with the abundance of time that they have, that they also extrapolate, like, you know, I guess like procrastination is what I'm saying. But, you know, like, you never know when they're going to get around to it. And it's been a really long time, years, that Cinnabar has done the Nightwatch, and he still hasn't found a new thing for it. And so Foss is the one who's actually taking the initiative to do that. I might have mentioned this again with the field, but it, it also relates to how um, Foss has been, like, laying in the field at the beginning. Uh, and we don't know how long they've been laying there until someone calls out to them. And so it could relate in that way, too, with just the time stuff. Now, here I'm also talking about how Foss still doesn't have confidence that they'll find a job for Cinnabar. And they start to have a little guilt about it, too, later on, you know, just with the fact that they can't find a job for Cinnabar. And then Ventricosis is um, kind of, like, leaning into, like, the man man uh, manipulative side. Uh, like, oh, not in this land. Like, suggesting that Foss can still find a job for Cinnabar elsewhere, and so that leads Foss to the beach. Let's go to the beach. Um, and then the ocean, and then to the moon. So this kind of, like, gets Foss's head rolling, uh, that in order to find Cinnabar a job, Foss needs to travel all around and look at different places to really understand what to do, when it's really just as simple as, uh, you know, like, being friends with Cinnabar. That's really the simplest thing that Foss could do to help the situation. But Foss is so set on finding Cinnabar a job, a role in the society, uh, rather than how to fix the, their actual need to be needed. And here Ventricosis lore drops that there's some people, or uh, gem-like creatures in the water, uh, which piques Foss's curiosity and also is like, oh look at me, this snail is feeling sorry for me, you know, because Foss realizes, yeah. And, um... Then we hear Foss say, we're not allowed to go to the ocean, but oh well, I'm useless anyway. And that's such a heartbreaking line, um, because it really just shows that the reason why Foss is such a rebellious and risk-taking child is because they aren't needed in their society, so they don't feel a need to preserve themselves because there's no one relying on them, and they feel like since they can't provide anything to the society, the most they can do is to take risks to try and provide for the society. Foss says right here, I might as well take the risk because Foss uh, doesn't see the point in not taking the risk since nothing will change otherwise. And that's like a thing I already pointed out is that Foss is very susceptible to change. Uh, what I'm going to talk about here is I was kind of like trying to find any loose ends that I didn't really catch in the chapter. So um, I think I also said here, like, if you have anything that I missed, like, I probably missed something, I probably forgot to say something or dubbed over something that I forgot, then please, please let me know in the comments if you analyze anything differently. Um, I think I was talking about how I was really confused on the livestock uh, quote, like, at later, oh, I think I was saying that either Ventricosis is playing up the story to be more dramatic because of the Lunarians, um, or... Uh, like, because I could, didn't know why Ventricosis used the word livestock, uh, because that's such a, because they don't eat them, I hope, I presume they don't, and they don't, uh, the Lunarians don't, uh, use them for anything, as far as I remembered at the time I was recording this video, but, um, when I recorded the other videos, I remembered that the Lunarians use the, uh, snail people, uh, criminals, um, for human experiments, you know, to try and make humans, uh, or to use, so that's why, uh, that's the live spot stock aspect, asp, uh, aspect, I believe, and I felt that it was kind of interesting that the Amber River have enough people to where they can single out their, their bad, in quotes, uh, and do that. Um, I, I made that analysis in the other video, though, so, yeah, but that recording's gone anyway. But yeah, um, I don't know what I'm talking about here, but I'm pointing at the page, uh, talking about Congo probably. Oh, I might have been mentioning how Foss gets different parts of every single race's leader. 
Because, of course, the first one is ventricosis and the shell agate legs. And then the second one is uh, acmea with Foss's eye. Uh, and then finally, Foss gets Congo's eye. And Foss gets something from the leaders of every race. Uh, and that's pretty significant, I think. But at this point, that president hasn't been set yet. So we just don't know about it. it but it's something to observe as you, we get later on the, the story, just that the three leaders of the races give Foss something in, on their journey uh, to whatever, you know. And, okay, here I believe I'm talking about how uh, Ventricosis uh, mentions that they ate Foss because they looked so like delicious, you know, because of the color. And they specifically mentioned the the specific color that Foss is. I believe that that actually indicates that um, the Lunarians were told Ventricusis, uh, Foss's color, and that's how Foss was identified. And um, so Ventricosis just had to remember to eat that one, or you know, and Euclid and Jade like got close, but Ventricosis didn't actually move until Foss was near. So that's why I think that happened because uh yeah and then here i was getting out the book to show like the color difference uh, i forgot exactly the words that ventricosis used to describe foss's color but you know foss is like a teal light uh green i don't know green blue teal I, they're teal to me but um you know jade is a very much dar dark green or something and you know euclid is clearly not uh and so oh man i heard someone describe euclid's color as tide pod at some point and i just can't get out of it that's so funny anyway um you know it's very easily to spot foss is what i was going with there here i'm aimlessly flipping through the pages probably cooking with what i'm saying or i'm just tr saying that i don't know what else to talk about except when i do uh once i'm done flipping through the random pages i remember that cinnabar uh in the book that came with volume 12 uh describes how they really love flowers and of course in this uh, in the scene with Cinnabar and Congo in this chapter, uh, you know that scene that's very sad with, with Cinnabar reaching out for the flowers and Congo stopping uh, Cinnabar so that because they're poisonous. And that scene, like you can tell that Cinnabar likes touching the flowers. But in the lore book, I'm sorry, I've, there's all this extended content that I have too much knowledge about. In the lore book, it talks about how the characters are allowed to grow flowers. Uh, in their rooms and of any color they want and I was pointing at it when I was saying this but I don't know what I'm doing in the video right now so I'm just gonna spew it out uh, but the you can see in the images that Cinnabar is trying to touch the flowers you see in the last image that there are no flowers in the room and I think that's because Cinnabar touched them all and they all wilted you know just because Cinnabar loves flowers so much but when Cinnabar touches them they die and it shows that like um like it shows that like cultivating flowers is also something that is pretty much like a hobby of all the gems and Cinnabar is the only one who can't do it that's something I just thought of now but it makes me sad uh see now I'm finally oh no it's gone uh, <laughs> I'm talking about the flowers now about how they cultivate them in the room and all that I finally got there I don't know what I was talking about before I was cooking something I don't know but um yeah, and so it shows that Cinnabar really likes flowers. It even It's foreshadowing um, to nothing that's get paid off in the actual manga, but is paid off in the lore book that, or in the book that was released with 12. But in the book that was released with 12, you learn that, like, Cinnabar is a botanist. I guess you just get to see Cinnabar once as a Lunarian uh, in chapter 60, 90, 96, I believe. And, but, um, you know that Cinnabar becomes a botanist, and Cinnabar is just so happy to touch flowers, and that's what it talks about in there. Oh, and I remembered that um, the foreshadowed bit that I thought was foreshadowing, like, Cinnabar's love for flowers, because Cinnabar never states explicitly that they love flowers, is that when uh, Foss comes over with, like, a plant in their hand on the hill, uh, and Foss, not Foss, Cinnabar comes up to them and tells them that there's all these plants that... Uh, are not documented that don't have names like around where Cinnabar usually walks. It shows that Cinnabar really pays attention to the plants. And Cinnabar also criticizes, I'm re remembering this now, re Cinnabar also criticizes Daya for looking up in the sky too much. And it shows that Cinnabar is always looking down. I assumed originally that that was because to show that Cinnabar is looking down like a lot 
like as if they're more depressed but it also shows that they enjoy plant life a lot more and so that's kind of like really cool foreshadowing if you think about it too much um <laughs> and so i just thought that those small details show that cinnabar really loves flowers but they only explicitly state that they love flowers way later on but it makes sense and they state that because they're so happy that they can finally touch them uh and it makes sense but it, I love the subtle character building here where uh, Ichikawa didn't have to explicitly state like, oh, Cinnabar really likes flowers anywhere. Uh, but just with those details, you get the sense that Cinnabar does like plants. So it's cool like that. Uh, and now I'm closing the book and probably saying that uh, that's all I could think of. If you think of anything else, uh, let me know in the comments. And then I'm probably like saying like, thanks for watching. Uh, oh, anything about the character page? Yeah. Or the cover or anything like that. Uh, Thanks for watching. The next two might be weird because I have to re-record over them. Bye.